Hey guys, this is the video that goes along with the Q&A on squinting. Uh, and as you can see, I started with a color study. Uh, I wasn't sure when I started whether or not I was going to do a uh, full face, or actually even for a little while had considered doing like a torso up portrait, but I assume since it's on squinting it's probably easier if I just, just show the eyes for the most part. Um, but you can already see in the color study that the main location markers on the face, like the eyebrows and the eyelids, uh, already kind of imply that he's squinting, because you can see the strain of the muscles uh, in the brow, and the way that the light, that little bit of reflected light that I've put in already, uh, is emphasizing that crease on the side of his eye. Because the main thing that you want to emphasize is the contraction of the muscles around the eye. <clears throat> and the best way to do that is to just sort of show all those wrinkles. And you don't want to push them so much that, you know, it looks, uh, I guess, kind of silly or goofy with how deep you're making the wrinkles. Like, don't, don't use black or anything when you're drawing them, but you want to make sure that you get in all the little folds that are going on as all the skin gets pressed together. You can see here, rather than uh, using dark values to describe everything, I'm trying to get as much of the description done with the reflected light as I can before going in with these uh, deeper darks. Because if you just draw it all in dark value, it does sort of, it feels more like a two dimensional drawing. And most of the definition that you get when you see wrinkles and lines and things on people's faces is just basically where the the highlights are going to be capturing it because when someone stands totally in shadow and you've only got maybe like a kind of fill light or a dim light in the room you'll notice that most of their wrinkles aren't visible and it's not until you start having more uh, more focused spotlights and things like that on the textures on someone's face that suddenly you can see where all the wrinkles are. Which actually is a good point. Uh, so when you're considering your light sources for how you're going to light someone that's squinting, assuming that squinting is one of the things that you want to emphasize in the picture, you should try to position the lights so that when they hit the face, they're not going all over it. They're either coming from the side or below or above, but not directly in front of the face because that's going to wash out all the wrinkles.
So again, here I am emphasizing the wrinkles by increasing the lighter values as opposed to continually darkening things. Also notice how the, the fleshy part below the eyebrow, it kind of descends over the top eyelid. And not everybody's face does that. Um, when people squint, and I mean with pretty much the way they use the muscles in all their face, uh, people's faces actually fold in different ways. And if you look at, because I'm, I'm using myself for reference for this, um, if you look at the two eyes, the left eye, it does it a lot more, because one of my eyes, that top part comes down over the top eyelid quite a bit, uh, only when I'm squinting. But on the other one, it, it doesn't for the most part. It, it avoids the area. And depending on if you're trying to paint someone who is a recognizable person, like, say, Clint Eastwood squinting or something like that, you also want to try to figure out how their face folds. Because just using the same using the same wrinkles on everyone's face isn't going to feel right. Another interesting thing, and I'm assuming that you read the Q&A, uh, this is repeated information, but the muscle that is creating most of those folds is the um, obicularis oculi, and the folds up towards the brow, and on the left side of the eye, and the right side of the eye, and under, those are all related to that one circular muscle that is kind of compressing into the middle. And you may notice, even though I do put like a very, very subtle white of the eye in the eyes as I'm going to do this, uh, for the most part, they're all one value. I mean, they're, they're very dark. It's not black. It's a, it's a, it's a dark, dark red with like a hint of purple. But um, if you were to actually paint in the whites of the eyes in a way where it was recognizable from, from a distance, it would look wrong. Because the way that I'm using the light, and in general, you've got the eyelashes in front of the eye, that's going to block a lot of the light. And then, unless you have a direct light right in front of the face, which again, for the sake of showing uh, squinting, isn't going to help you out very much. Without a direct light in front of the face, you really aren't going to see almost any detail in the eye. You're just going to catch the highlight of where the brightest part of the light is reflecting, and that's pretty much it.
So you may notice when I'm painting in the darker values for the wrinkles, it's pretty much, it's only for like a deep occlusion shadow where it's basically like where the fold is going into, into nothing. And unless you've got a deep fold that's going in like that, you can pretty much paint the wrinkles just with the high values in the light. This is a really long pause. What was I doing? <laughs> what? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think I had the matrix on while I was painting this. I bet something really important was happening.
so another thing is when you're when you're painting a bunch of wrinkles like this and particularly things that have really deep folds uh, it's going to create a lot of contrast and so the contrast is good for drawing your eye into those areas but you don't want to have too many hard edges then in the surrounding areas like on the nose that's one of the reasons I kind of smoothed out the highlights quite a bit is already those wrinkles are gonna they're gonna take a lot of a lot of attention from the stuff around it and if you make it if you make the whole thing too busy then the whole picture is just gonna feel busy obviously and as long as you keep all that contrast around the eyes then it'll still feel balanced and actually make the eyes more interesting All right, well, I hope that helped you guys out in seeing how it is that I uh, paint squinting, and have a good one.